Welcome all you beautiful, sexy human creatures. How we doing this evening? Yanava! On this Wednesday night. My screen looks a little different. I found a little button that does a whole bunch of bells and whistles. So I made it a little more fiery, fiery, fiery. As opposed to, as opposed to the normal gold screen. I like gadgets, <laughs> but I made it a little fiery on purpose. Tonight's presentation is animal magnetism. What is your attraction? Instinct or animal instinct? We're going to play and dance all around those ideas and hopefully we can Sandwich them together like an Oreo cookie. <laughs> By the way, did you know the the inside of an Oreo cookie is made with pork fat? Did you know that? For all you vegetarians out there who like Oreo cookies. <laughs> Welcome everyone to Center of Light. Let's see who's here. Lynn Marie says, Yanava. She's got the two eyes with the dot. How did you do that dot, girl? It doesn't look like a love dot. It doesn't have a heart. It has a circle. Pretty cool. Mary Emelon, Bo James. Bro, sorry I missed you. We didn't connect. We'll connect soon. Lisa Elaine Watson. Elwood, Carolyn Renando, Natalie Lavoie. Robert Harrison. Keith is finishing up his coffee. I am on some serious drugs. No, I'm not. Yes, I am. But they're not drugs. They're not allopathic drugs. It's vibration of medicine. You take the red pill, take the blue pill, <laughs> it's vibrational medicine, it's vibronics. I got a few things I am balancing. <laughs> so that being said, Robert, I can't have coffee. Coffee stores radiation because they're dr coffee beans are dried in the sun. And radiation is too strong of an energy. So we're talking about very subtle layers of quantum mechanical physics. So coffee's not allowed. People say, well, what about Coca-Cola or whatever? It's not the caffeine. It's the radiation. That's why you can't put these pills in the sunlight. Same thing. Let's see who's here. I think I went through everybody. Judy Nix decided to show up to the party. Better late than never. I'm teasing Judy. How are you, Judy? Dana's here. Pri's here. Kelly's here. And her avian kind. I love it. Lincoln. Melissa McElroy. Ross Rose. Ross Phillips. Dana. Tammy Boudreaux Toops. What's up, Tammy? Rick Vito. The V's in the house. Trey McDowell. Sana. Emily Hawkins. What's up, Emily? So tonight, Rena just joined. Love me some Rena. 
Tonight we are speaking about Like the scorpions. Dynamite! Animal Magnetism. What a great album that is. Oh my God. That album is so ridiculously good. I am doing this presentation on Animal Magnetism. Not because of the scorpions. I should have done it because of the scorpions. Either way, it's in honor of the scorpions. Tribute. Thank you both for offering... And asking one to please share. Hello, Rick. Animal magnetism. I saw a post. Hello, Linda. Mary Emelong. Jason Doyle. So tonight's presentation, animal magnetism. What is your attraction? Instinct or animal instinct? I saw someone post in the feed yesterday about attraction. We all know about attraction. It's innocent. It's pure. It's joyful. It's fun. You can also be fooling yourself. And even in the fooling of yourself, it's still fun until it's not fun anymore. Remember back in those days when you were attracted to that person or you both had a mutual attraction and things change. But also, not about present ongoing relationships. This is about anything in your life. Even if you're single and you find yourself attracted to someone. I would rather you be, be safe than sorry or rather have clarity, explosive clarity about the red flags you did see, maybe have ignored, or maybe simply you didn't see, about a person that you are attracted to, situations in your life you are attracted to, all things in your life you are attracted to. Attracted to, naturally, because of like vibration always, vibration finds its partner and creates a match. So you are attracted. That is the law of attraction. But are you consciously attracting that which you want or are you in a karmic pattern? We're gonna get down to more of that in a little bit. I'm not gonna let all the juice out of the orange just yet. Welcome to Center of Light. Let's see who's here. Uh, who just joined? Christine Nieto. Nieto. Hi, Christine. It's good to see you. I love your post, girl. I do. Pretty hop of cuckoos in the house. <laughs> Carolyn Ronaldo says, safe is good. And you know what, Carolyn? I hear you. Safe is good. And I meant it in that context. Now I want to change the word safe to a different context. So you are correct. In that aspect, safe is good. Hello, Carmen Shasha. And another aspect, safe is not good. Safe meaning I'd rather be safe because I'm aware and I see red flags and I've diverted myself to another path because I can now see. Safe is great. Now let's take that safe and put it aside and grab this other safe. Safe is not good. Safe means security. Rather, it's insecurity. Though I like safety because I feel secure. That is actually insecurity. But when you're truly in security, you don't have to play it safe because something inside of you connects so consciously you become invincible. Or more so than you were in the recent past The closer you feel connected to spirit, consciously, the more tough, so to speak, you are and can be. And often, I'm not saying going out and looking for trouble, but when trouble finds you, 
can come out unscathed. From the grace bank account of the infinite reservoir that has all the funds, has all the F-U-N-D funds and all the F-U-N-S funds. Funds. You're drawing that spirit, that economy, that wealth from the wellspring, the one wellspring. So what I am going to be offering tonight is to help you become conscious of your attractions. Also, what you may see as satisfactions. There are two different things. Attractions, let's, 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 let's use it this way. So instead of me always flipping on the wordplay, let's call conscious attraction, attraction. Let's call unconscious attraction, satisfaction. Kind of paints the picture, right? It divides them a little wider so we can see them wholly. Not only wholly as in wholeness, but wholly as in holy. Because when you are the master of the great divide in unity, as the glue, the adherence, by adhering to some of the things and the models I'm going to be bringing forth, will bring you back together so much so with yourself. Those satisfactions, unconscious attractions, will stick out like a red flag. Many of them have in every aspect of your life. Partnership-wise, job-wise, this-wise, that-wise. And you've seen the red flags, but you did it anyway. And then you get upset a few years down the road because the role that you've assigned to the person and or the situation is not carrying itself out like the script you told it to play and don't improvise on your lines. That's satisfaction oriented. I want satisfaction. Attraction means I am consciously and deliberately saying, I am drawing this, not necessarily, we can use that image, drawing this to me. You're not really drawing anything to you. <laughs> it's not what you're doing. It seems that way. But what you are doing is you are drawing it through you. You're literally drawing it with a pencil. You're the pencil. You're the tool. You're the craftsman. You're drawing it. I want this and I don't want that and I don't want this and I want that more and I want that. You're doing all that. So you're not drawing it to you. It's already here. Abundance is already here. The question becomes, are you clear to see the abundance all around you? So the attraction of the hopeful partner, the hopeful job, becomes yours when you're not so attached. Yes, at first the attraction seems like glue and nothing's ever going to separate us, the us of it, or you and the situation of it. And it seems permanent. That glue is really strong, but it's not a long-lasting glue. There are other glues that are not as strong that are created, alchemized, fashioned to be long-lasting, solid. So it's not really about the bells and the whistles. I get it. I'm human. I'm a guy. I played in the arena like all of us. Bells and whistles are fun. What are you attracted to? Animal magnetism is the title of this presentation. Or animal instinct is another uh, possible title. Animal magnetism. What are you attracted to? Instinct or animal instinct. September 21st, 22nd, spiritual event in Memphis, Tennessee. Four Points Spiritual Expo. I am a keynote speaker, Larry Flaxman. Discovery Channel on Ancient Aliens is a keynote speaker. Dr. Rita Louise is a keynote speaker. And is she, pfft, she's a lighthouse. Kaboom. Little bitty lady. Kaboom. 
she comes with an amazing punch of wisdom and dear lord she's powerful phenomenal speaker very engaging lynette marie about holistic eating basically preventative medicine september 21st and 22nd memphis tennessee get in your car come to memphis if you're not from this area take a road trip hang out with me get to town a day earlier i play music come hang out we we'll wake up we'll go get some breakfast your treat <laughs> we'll go to the spiritual fair $15 per day or $20 for both days. Why not purchase the two-day ticket? New healing modalities. Sound vibration, light vibration healing modalities. Practitioners of all sorts. Reiki, readers, gemstones, gem smiths. Um, healers of all sorts. Best-selling authors, booths, vending booths. If you want more information, you can contact me or you can get on Facebook and look up Circle of Chi. That's Circle of Q-I. Circle of Chi. You need any help with that, you know how to find me. Center of Light tonight's presentation is Animal Magnetism. What are you attracted to? Are you conscious? Attraction? Or are you unconscious looking for satisfaction? And there is a fraction of a difference. It's so small. 51%, you tilt. The universe begins to put momentum in your butt. And the wheel begins to move. And you move forward. Slowly but surely, like a train. Woo! Woo! And the next thing you know, you're the passenger. You get out the way. You no longer have to push start the train. Downhill. So they can let off the clutch to try to get it pumping. You hear me? <laughs> Gonna be right back. Blessings. Remember that all things are possible. You must choose to be accountable, responsible, enough to believe, and open your heart to receive.
Welcome back to Center of Light, all my beautiful, sexy, human creature being souls. Red alert, red alert. It's good to see you tonight. We're talking about animal magnetism. Let's define... <laughs> let's, let's, let's paint this picture in three parts. You have um, animal... Let's call it attraction for now. You have attraction. Hey, baby. Then you have attraction, you have. And then you have attraction, and you have. I'm not saying they can't all be inclusive. Most people don't live in such attractive inclusion. They usually are in one of those phases. Sometimes they may a little crossfade or in periods. Relationships, friends, jobs, family, attraction. Animal magnetism, what is your attraction? In, being in, with instinct, divine instinct, connecting to your parent, your universal parent, instinct, the thread of wisdom, also known as inspiration. Or are you always living in? We all like those different aspects and those different energies. Many of them are very temporary, while others are forever. You can, like I said earlier, you can have a, a glue that is fast bonding and very tough, but its lifespan is only this long. Or you can have a glue, it takes a little while longer to dry, to coalesce to adhere to solidify itself but once this does you're not going to pull it apart the wood is going to break before the glue is going to give i know that glue exists my father when he used to make cajun pierogues down to buy in south louisiana man shot, let me tell you there was a glue it took overnight and a day and a half to dry but once it did you're going to split wood before that glue is going to give up. <laughs> so tonight we're talking about animal magnetism. What is your attraction? Is it... Is it... Or is it... And how many of those do you have with you? Most importantly, are you in control? And I don't mean control like a control fanatic. I mean, do you have a handle on how quick or how over a period of time your life can possibly go awry. Animal magnetism, that which you are bringing into your experience. Let me look at my quick keynotes, key points. All right. I have a few slogans I've been reading out about my work, what I am about, what I do, why I do it. Come, see, reflect. You want information? I got tons of it. Probably more than you will ever need. You want knowledge? I will tell you what changed me. You want wisdom? I'll tell you my life story. You want the truth? And a miracle, look in the mirror. Here we go with the presentation. Welcome, everyone. Let's see if there's any newcomers. Joel Flores, have you been riding next to any 18-wheelers on the highway lately, bro? <laughs> Let me see who's here in the room this way. Uh, Joel Flores, a friend of mine, beautiful man. Dear Lord, he's a beautiful man. Or in an 18-wheeler, almost potentially serious accident many years ago. Spinning on the expressway at 70 miles an hour because an 18-wheeler changed lanes. Sent our car to Lupin. 
But anyway. <clears throat> Many years ago, I was playing music at a club here in Memphis called Willie Moffat's. For those just arriving, tonight's presentation is animal magnetism, being attracted to a certain something, a person, friendship, whatever, those things that just pull you in, that lure you in, a big juicy carrot dangling in front of your face. And the why and the clarity of the tr attraction in the first place. Many years ago, I was playing music at a club in Memphis called Willie Moffat's. And on break, a friend of mine who had been calling me for the last year, off and on, every couple months to say, Keith, you got time to talk? I say, sure. She proceeded to tell me how the guy she's dating has this character and this quality and has got her boogered and bothered. And I've noticed, because I know her, the type of guys that she had dated. So one night at this club, I'm on break, and she's sitting at the bar. <laughs> and there's a gentleman next to her who had all those qualities that she's attracted to. But she always finds herself on the backside of it in grief, misery, sadness, all these different lower energy places. But she likes that kind of guy. And she's been giving him eyes all night. All that shit, right? So he decides he's going to go to the bathroom. And I, all, I watch this all unfold. So when he goes to the bathroom, the guy on this side of her says, Can I buy you a drink? <laughs> and she looks at him and says, Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you so much, but I'm good. That was the end of that. And I knew both gentlemen. And the guy that went to the bathroom that she was all goo goo gaga over was the guy she's been calling me complaining about. <laughs> and the guy that was next to her on this side was the guy she's been professing to me in those phone calls that she really wants to have happen in her life. How is that possible? How could she not see her own potential destiny when I could? I saw it. I saw her griping about dude, and she's goo goo gaga over dude, telling me she really wants dude. And so when dude says, can I buy you a drink? She says, how you doing? See you later. <laughs> That would be a karmic pattern. Yes, she is attracted to both parties. And she was sandwiched in the middle of possibility. This way or that way. And again, she chose that way, which led into the next phone call two weeks later about the same thing we've been talking about. It is the law of attraction. In that moment, she was she was in hyper fertile field. She attracted both. This one and that one. And she still made the same karmic pattern decision to move back to the same thing as to why two weeks later I got the phone call. Again. Animal magnetism coming from our animalistic nature that we are magnets, that we pull life experience to us. Relationships, friendships, jobs, how the family treats you, this, that, this, that. No one is exempt from this law. <laughs> no one. So when we feel an attraction, an affinity for something, Let's make sure it's an infinity of a real something. It does not negate any relationship you had or have where things may not be going in the direction that you would like it to 
Beyond that, you are in a situation of trying to control not only something you can't control, the person and or the universe that is trying to give you something of a greater possibility if you only take your hands off of the wheel. I've been playing music for the last four years so much. I was a walking jukebox. I was doing two gigs a day, five, six days a week. Every once in a while, I would have a three gig a day gig show up. I'd still be doing it. But now that it, compl when one dropped, this one dropped, this one dropped, this one dropped, this one dropped. I was attracted to the money. I loved it. But I also love what I do. And then I realized, Keith, 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 you've been... And people will tell you, I was pushing the envelope. I was pushing it. I loved it. I had the stamina. I still have the stamina. God dang it. I'll be doing it again. But in this break of it, I've attracted something, not from my animalistic nature, but from my instinct. Not my animal, ooh, ooh, ah, ah, I gotta have it, I gotta have it. Instinct. I simply attracted something different from my instinct was you've diligently worked you've created a financial nest a cushion i know all the aspects of how i can stay where i'm at and my life is unfolded as to where i'm able to do these presentations to share my heart my love my life with you hoping that it catches on and it attracts you into moving out of any, any animalistic nature and into your divine nature, which is your instinct. I'm not saying throw away your animalistic nature. It's fun. It's, a re, it's, an, it's an arena. It's like going to the circus. Why do you go to the circus? Because it's fun. People flip in the air. They're high in the sky. What a great metaphor. They've worked on their craft that they know exactly what they're doing and they're very minimal injuries. And then you're surrounded by nature. The animals, your animalistic nature, you're having fun with the animals. Sometimes those animals, the animal in you, likened to the animals in the circus, get so sick and tired of being pinned up the tigers, the lions, at first, when they get in jail. In the cages at the circus, they're okay with it. They're getting steak. They're getting a slice of a zebra's ass to eat every day. And they're okay with the bars for a while. Likewise, when we choose attraction unconsciously, even though we saw or did not see the red flags, or someone flat out told you, or your boss flat out told you, or a situation flat out told you, and you kept moving, in hindsight, when you find yourself imprisoned in that same cage as the lions and the tigers who liked the zebra slice of ass of meat until they realized they were in a cage. This is very powerful, this, this analogy. Attraction is powerful. It could create the biggest pain in your ass because of your unconsciousness. Or, consciously, it can create a lifelong blessing. There's a lot of gray area in there, of course. And there's a learning curve in there, which is the purpose and the reason for it all in the first place. So, do you want to get out of the animal attraction cage if you are such a one that you may find yourself in i have to have this i have to have that slice of zebra because i'm the cat i'm a human being and i have to have the slice of that job the slice of that person all these things do i have to have i have to have that to survive no you don't that's where we truly lose sight of attraction and fall into looking for satisfaction then it gets painful. 
a little bit of reading. Animal magnetism, also known as mesmerism, mesmerize, ooh, ooh, ah, ah, goo, goo, was the name given by German doctor Franz Mesmer in the 18th century to what he believed to be an invisible natural force possessed by all living beings, including humans, animals, and vegetables. He believed that the force could have physical effects, including healing, be it conscious attraction or unconscious attraction, which we are, for the sake of this presentation, going to call satisfaction, including healing. And he tried persistently, but without success, to achieve scientific recognition of his ideas. More on animal magnetism. These are the different levels, aspects of magnetism, attraction that we're speaking about. Strongly attractive personal charm. <laughs> Strongly attractive personal charm. That's A. Letter B is sex appeal. A special personal power or presence held to facilitate the hypnotism of others. Think about what was just said. Wow, I'm reading this for the first time myself. A special personal power or presence held to facilitate the hypnotism of others. Think about it. Everyone has a rock star, TV star, someone because they are, quote, a star, let's not fool ourselves, who has an appeal. Ooh, he or she's hot. They have a hypnotism over you in, such a, in some way. They do. Number three, a theory developed in the 19th century by Franz Mesmer that the body is pervaded by a magnetic fluid that can be that can be redirected by a healer to cure a disease. A version of the theory, the a version of the theory, was later developed as hypnotism. Linda says, "Ask. Let's let's look at the room." <laughs> Hello, Diane Rhodes. I always love acknowledging people. It helps me to connect. Linda asked the question. Dana, you're welcome, dear. Linda asked the question. How do you explain that? How do you explain couples that stay happily married for 50 or 60 years? I can tell you exactly why. Because it's what I offered, I think, Linda, before you came into the forum. Certain things that we call, I am attracted to this, let's use people. We can include jobs, we can include money, we, let's just use people because that's kind of what people lean into when we talk about attraction. Because everything else is a subfolder and it doesn't matter anyway because it's all the same thing across the board. The playing field is even. How do people stay married for 50 or 60 years? As I explained a little early, Linda, I don't, I'm not sure, I don't think you were here, was if you have... Let's liken, and I get it, we all have that immediate bang factor, the attraction. That could be the very bait that we need to pull us into a potential life partner. The world has changed from that time to this time. Now, I want to know who that person is to... Now, I want to know who that person is. It's a whole different game. The times have changed. As I said earlier, with an analogy is, that immediate bang looking at another person can be a very cool thing. But in today's world, if we liken that immediate powerful attraction, attraction 
like a glue, like Gorilla Glue or Super Glue. It dries really, or a glue that dries really hard, really fast. But after a while, it can break apart. It doesn't have a shelf life. Or we can liken that to a glue that takes longer to dry, takes longer to get to know a person. So I'm not ignoring red flags, what I've seen, but I'm so lonely and bored, I'm going to lean in it, into it anyway. And then being upset on the back half, it's like a glue that may take longer to dry, but its adherence is forever. So back in those days, Linda, if you're referring to people like your parents, my parents, many of all of our parents, why did those marriages and those relationships last so long? It's not an excuse. I don't have the answer. I know the energy and how it works. I know the law of spirit and the law of physics. Back then, and the law of the culture. Back then, the culture took things slow. You date. You ask the father to court his daughter. So there was an unfoldment process versus the bang. Let's jump into the sack. It's honeymoon for six months. Then after that, you figure that you have your dislikes. And it's not really your dislikes. It's not that you don't like the person you are with or the situation or the job you're with. We really don't like what we become because we made a choice too quickly that when we held out a little longer, we could have seen consciously. It was, not to, it was not meant to last. If you go into any situation, relationship, friendship, brother, sister, family, job, whatever it is, knowing that if something is not going to last and you take it further consciously, you know it wasn't going to last. So you actually enjoyed your time with it. Oh my God, I'm so grateful I spent this many years at my job working at McDonald's. I used to work at Subway and I loved it. I freaking loved it. It's the only actual job I love. I love being what they call it, a sandwich artist. But when we go into something expecting anything, especially today, to never change, we will sadly be disappointed. The only thing that will never change is change itself. And that machine is beginning to, spit, to pick up and speed up. So people who are living in relationship for... 50 and 60 years they have chosen to live by a different code than what is now I would say the norm of today that would be my response what is animal magnetism definition personal sexual attractiveness or raw charisma all these factors alter a person's aura and energy field and people intuitively feel it Emotions are contagious. People feel good around someone who lives vibrantly and feel bad around someone who lives fearfully. Women are generally 10 times more intuitive than men. Many other factors define a person's charisma. Animal magnetism refers only to the continuous nonverbal communication and flow of energy. You're standing next to someone that you think you are attracted to. Hi, Eddie Harris. If you are attracted to someone, it's okay. At least for a moment, pause, step back, and see if it's the uh, energy moving or the ah uh, energy moving. And you will find yourself as a football player playing in the game of life, running to either goal, because now you're conscious. Unconsciousness will place you in the satisfaction of the attraction versus the law of conscious deliberate attraction. But I don't want to be alone. And that's okay. Just know you're stepping into an arena that in my opinion and experience is likely not going to be permanent.
Now, if you understand that, then step all you like and have yourself a freaking blast. Linda says, so the young people who get married today have to look forward to getting divorced by no means whatsoever. That is not what I'm inferring whatsoever. What I am saying is that because of the large level of consciousness on the planet and how people are attracted today, it can be tough because there's so much energy moving. It's almost a religion. A religion that everyone sees an attraction to someone this way and we do this thing and we find ourselves further down the road in trouble. Doesn't imply that the youth of today have no future. I'm saying that when we step into a swimming pool, remember as a kid you used to get a swimming pool and you have six people making a whirlpool? <laughs> One moment. We find, we find ourselves, ourselves further down the road. Do you remember when we were children and we'd be in a swimming pool and we have six people running around the swimming pool making a whirlpool? Try to go against the current, which was always fun. It was kind of tough. That was 10 years ago. Today, there's 10 people in the swimming pool. There's one hell of a current moving. So for those youth, it can be a little more challenging because they're always being stimulated and bombarded by the magazines, the media, the news, the parents that teach them because the parents themselves believed it's about bling bling and fashion and glam and glitz. They are bombarded with all these different erroneous ways that our parents and grandparents were not subjected to. There was a certain way of courting. Some people, I'm sure the Amish, probably even the Hindi people in many of the cultures, but it seems like a lot of that has created the producing of children. The producing of children. The producing of children. Doesn't make me better not wishing anybody else to be born. But I am here and you are here and there's nothing we can do about it. So what we can do to create compassion is to illuminate everyone to becoming attracted divinely using instinct to animal magnetism satisfaction that in the end it turns out in stink it doesn't mean because of relationship or a job or a friendship that when it does go their separate way because life does have a tendency that's what life is doesn't mean it has to end in stink nastiness and this it can just be something of pleasure and a wishing well of things. So continuing on with the final reading segment about animal instinct or instinct and magnetism. What is animal instinct? Animals are born with certain instincts which are common to those in their breed. Some instinctual behaviors require a certain amount of maturation before they begin. The most obvious one is the instinct to mate or propagate. Instinct is an inherent behavior, a fixed action pattern that is unlearned. It can also be a pattern that needs to be unlearned in a different way of instinct. I'm using instinct as, in this regard, as wisdom. Tapping in and the normal, the naturalness of the universe, and God says, this is my natural state, and I'm now telling you about it and showing it to you, and you have a realization, you go, oh, wow. That's who I am at my nature. That is instinct. But I'm also using instinct, attraction, in an unconscious way, and I'm using that by calling it satisfaction. 
From the divine principle, God says to me in a meditation, you always get what you ask for. No prayer remains unanswered, though sometimes it may seem to be that way. Even a prayer that comes from lack, that unconscious instinct or attraction I'm talking about, even a prayer that comes from lack is answered. And since lack can only beget lack, if you ask spirit to help you to be irresponsible, then so be it. If you expect any deity to unburden your troubled souls, even the deity that you are attracted through to, if his name is John or Jill Doe, in your goo goo gaga ooh ooh ah ah attraction of this person unconsciously, you are making them your deity because in some way they become your salvation to happiness, do they not? If you expect any deity, high deity or earth deity, to unburden your troubled souls, you will all be waiting for a long time. Why should anyone other than you assume your responsibility? And I say, I don't know why. And God says, because my system is not designed to work any other way. Because the Lord helps those who help themselves. Because heaven on earth cannot be anchored until everyone assumes my kind of responsibility. Now is the time to assess yourself in such a way that you have not done before. Believe me, denial is not a river in Egypt. Denial only creates piles of confusion, kind of like dog poop you inevitably step in because you do not see it. Conscious attraction. Ooh, ooh, ah, ah. Satisfaction. To help yourself get out of the mess you are in, you must wear responsible shoes and walk responsibly in them. Responsibility only comes when you embrace your entire self, fears and all. I ask spirit, what do you mean by instinct and where does it come from? And God says to me, instinct is life's common thread of knowing and purpose. In instinct. I'm not talking about attraction. Unconscious attraction. Instinct is life's common thread of knowing and purpose. It comes from all previous times to guide you on the right path. The path of spirit. I say, I see. Spirit says, Keith, it is not enough to see. You must look, and ye shall seek me and find me, when ye shall search for me with all of your heart. Jeremiah 29, 13, 14. To all of my children, for the world to ever attain heaven on earth, things cannot be as they are now. It will take all nationalities, people, coming together to achieve the goal of love, peace, and unity. Trust that I will guide you in whatever you do. Just remember to breathe and do your very best to live in love, give in love, be in love, and love I shall give you and you shall receive. It is time to embrace yourselves, embrace all of humanity, and embrace the earth. Do this and you embrace me. We're going to move into the Sadguru. <laughs> Phenomenal message. On attraction. If you are such a one who is boogered by your job, family relationship, though this may talk about love interests, apply this across the board and you will see the same math applies to any aspect in your life. What is it you think you are attracted to? Is it because God is truly saying, this is so eye appealing because I'm getting your attention? Or do you? Really, look at this object, this idol worship, and are you becoming blinded? Simply, it's just a simple question. No one's judging you. No one's giving you the right or wrong of it. I'm asking you to be present within yourself when something literally like a fishing lure brings you into the experience. Fishing lure, look at this analogy. I just got tugged and not being asked to. So don't you think that you require for your best opportunity in life and decision-making process 
the faculty of reason to say, okay, this thing, now that you have my attention, I'm yet to give you back in reciprocal my intention. Intention. Or are you living in a state of tension because of an erroneous choice you made years before by not consciously saying, I know this is not going to last forever. I'm just going to play for a while to entertain myself. Or you can say, I'm just simply not interested in this. I want the full deal. I want a job that's going to last me a lifetime. I don't want to work at McDonald's because I'm getting too old for that shit. <laughs> or whatever the situation may be. Basically, the overview of this presentation tonight is how aware are you at those things that pull you into their experience versus you being the conscious one that deliberately pulls things into your experience. Big difference. You can live in love and light or you can live in fear, might, plight, fright. It's really your choice. And this applies to everything, including to me and my life across the board. So your spiritual life is not on church on Sunday for an hour and a half, two hours. Your spiritual life is 24-7. Well, Keith, what about when I fall asleep at night? This applies to your entire life until you wake up from the dream of separation. You are sleeping with your eyes open as well. Your spiritual life begins to truly kick in and you become the conscious, deliberate participant with the law of attraction to create those things that you are trying to bring to yourself deliberately versus being lost into an experience that in some years or time in the future, in hindsight, you find yourself in not so pleasant of a situation because you've invested in, vested, you've vested yourself into something so hard it's tough to take your fingers off of it. I have had this with of my uh, lots of my music experience. Lots of times when my jobs just left from me, I freaked out. I became conscious. I don't freak out anymore. Sadhguru, enjoy it. See you shortly. Walk to the center of light. Be right back. If you have any questions, anything you'd like to ask or bring forth, please feel free to do that. Peace. Sadhguru, how can a person stay committed to someone in a relationship? Is it natural to love someone and yet be sexually attracted to others? What should be the proper course of action that should follow or how does one handle this? See, uh, <clears throat> there, is a, there is a psychological integrity, there is emotional integrity, but there is a Biological integrity also. Integrity does not mean morality. Integrity means you create a situation where it works best for you. So when we say integrity, suppose I say there is a certain integrity to my body, this means it's strong and resistant to a whole lot of things, isn't it? It doesn't mean I'm morally stuck in something. So I'm talking about, I want you to understand the word integrity in that context. We are talking about integrity in terms of strength of this life. So if that is the thing, is it true? Do you remember how your great-great-great-great-great-grandmother ten generations ago looked like? Do you remember? No. But her nose is sitting on your face. <laughs> yes or no? Body remembers, isn't it? Body remembers your forefathers a million years ago, yes or no? So what you're calling as my body is a heap of memory, isn't it so? Yes. Hmm? Memory or no? See, now from Nepal you came to Shillong, you eat a lot of this uh, Meghalaya food, your features won't change because your body remembers what is your genetics no matter what. Or you start eating, let's say, cow's food or dog's food, your body will not get confused and become a dog or a cow because there is evolutionary memory in this. Do what you want, it never gets confused, isn't it? 
you start thinking I'm a dog and start barking like one, still the body won't change. Yes or no? Mentally you can, but body has such a deep-rooted memory. So this entire body, what you have, is essentially a certain integrity of memory. If that loses that memory integrity, then you will see it will become vulnerable to so many things. Now, the nature of the body is such that anything that you touch with a certain level of involvement will naturally absorb that memory. Not mentally, physically it will absorb that memory. In traditionally in this culture we call this runanubandha. You heard of such a word? Hmm? Runanubandha. What this means is physical memory that you gather. Why people, you know, you will see this with people, let's say in their home, they will go and sit in one place. This will usually the older people you will see. They want to go and sit in the same place. They won't sit in another place. Have you noticed this? Even your dog, he comes if he wants to sit here, he'll smell this, he'll smell that, he'll smell that, he'll smell that. And uh, after much searching, he will settle down in that particular place. Next time you chase him somewhere, he comes, he goes and sits in the same place. Because there is memory. Today there is forensic equipment where you're sitting here right now, you went away. After two, three, eight hours, if they come, not with a, uh, a dog, a dog can easily do it. But with forensic equipment, we come here and just check this chair and we know it was you who were sitting here, not somebody else. So there is memory. Wherever you sit, stand, whatever you touch, there is memory and transaction happening all the time. Well, you come from Nepal, in India also it's very much there, in South is very strongly there, North maybe it's become weakened. We… people never give salt to another person. Do you know this here also? If somebody gives you salt, you say, please keep it there. Because there are certain materials which transmit memory much better than others. Salt, sesame seeds, lemons, like this, if you give traditional people, they'll say, keep it there, I will take it. Because they don't want to develop runanabandha to you, with you. Now, uh, in India, if you see older generation of people, if you try to shake their hands, they'll do, do like this because they don't want to get runanubandha with you. Because the idea is to keep the integrity of your body's memory in such a way that it doesn't become vulnerable to other things, that you become a very integrated life. If you want to nurture yourself to be a certain possibility, then you have to maintain the memory integrity. This is what runanubandha means. You keep your physical memory to the minimum. A sexual interaction, is something where a huge amount of memory is taken from one to the other. So always, not in this society, everywhere else, forever people saw the advantage of keeping that memory to the minimal. If you… if you make that memory very complex, you will see to be, be at ease will become very difficult after some time. There will be pleasure, but there will be no joy in your life. You can… You can observe people, don't go by what I'm saying. You can observe people, they will have pleasure, they will giggle all the time, but you look at them, there is no joy in them, there's no ease. Because the ease will go away with excessive memory. This is not only with sexuality, there are many other things that you do like this. Right now you see this very much in the Western societies. Wherever I go, especially in America, people will come, Sadhguru, where is my hug? I, well, it must be with you. <laughs> Why is it with me? <laughs> it is not like at a certain moment when you feel close to somebody, you hug them. It's like all the time you have to touch people because today psychiatrists are analyzing these things and saying that is because they have not been sufficiently touched by, them, by their mothers and parents at an early age. When they grow up, they're desperately longing to touch somebody all the time. All these things have a serious impact on one's life. How much physical contact when the child is born, this will determine how much physical contact they will long for later on. And 
the memory of what an infant picks up from the mother at that time, because till a child becomes four and a half years of age, in many ways, energy-wise, it's not a separate life. It's still attached to the mother's body. Actually, if by nature if people go till then, they must be drinking the mother's milk and connected up to four and a half years, that's how naturally it was. So, the energy doesn't mature at that time, more and more memory that you come get from the mother is better and better to strengthen this. But once the child begins to move out and be becomes an individual, life is organizing itself. People come to me and say, Sadhguru, can you bless my daughter, can you bless my son? First thing I ask is, how old? If they say fifteen, sixteen, eighteen, all right. If they're over twenty-one, I say no, because me blessing you, Blessing will not go to your child. You may still think emotionally that's my child, but as far as life is concerned, it's become fully separate. Generally, the course of life is considered to be approximately eighty-four years or one thousand and eight cycles of the moon. The cycles of the moon and our body is very directly connected. Only because our mother's bodies were in sync with the cycles of the moon, we are born, otherwise we wouldn't be born, isn't it? Hello? So, a full life is considered one thousand and eight cycles of the moon, which will approximately consider as eighty-three to eighty-four years. So, if one crosses eighty-four, it's considered a full life. In this, the first quarter is the only time when it is connected to parentage. After that, the child must move, because energy-wise, you cannot connect those two lives anymore. So that is when the longing, if you have not f created enough integrity within yourself, the longing for another body multiplies. Even though the hormonal phase may be higher between fifteen to twenty, the longing to bind and bond with somebody increases after twenty-one years of age because unknowingly you have… you are like a satellite who fell off the main mother. You come off the motherboard, now you want to attach to something unless you find some integrity. This is why between twelve and eighteen, one must do lot of sadhana to strengthen the body so that you don't desperately bind yourself to something or somebody. You must consciously, if you wish to take a partner, it must be a conscious process. If it's a compulsive process, then you will pay the price for it. This is not a question of morality. It is not that this is sin, that is sin. The question is, what is your priority in your life? If your priority is to make this life rise to a higher possibility, then you must be conscious. If you want to somehow live and go, it's okay. the 
sons with a friend Another chance to let love in And in another life Our eyes will meet one more time I see you Welcome back to the Center of Light, all my Yana Vites, on this Wednesday night, June. Fulgham just showed up. She says, wow, this brings back some beautiful memories. Love you, Keith. June, I love you. You're a beautiful lady. Listening to the Sadhguru presentation, <laughs> he said, how much you are caressed, nurtured, and touched as a child will determine how much touching, caressing, and nurturing you will need as an adult. Of course it does. How could it be any other way? He also talked about being conscious. If you are attracted to a job, a situation, a relationship, at least for your sake of ongoing bliss, have the discernment, na, ya, heart, willpower. I have the free will to choose whatever I want. Na, the clear microscope, telescope, magnifying glass to hone in exactly what I truly want. And va, your actions to carry it out. He says, you have the na, you have the choice to experience something that you know is going to be temporary. Enjoy it. Go into it consciously knowing that it's going to end. Versus, I'm thinking this thing because I'm unconscious is going to last forever. 
will kill you. It will throw you into a dark night of the soul faster than anything. Ignorance is not bliss, I am here to tell you. If ignorance, listen to this, <laughs> I'm channeling this from Sadhguru. If ignorance was bliss, that would mean the whole world would be blissed out. Ignorance is not bliss. The things you are attracted to, something comes along in your life, and you're hooked, literally and metaphorically hooked into the experience. That's cool. It can be potential for a life situation, friend, relationship, job. Oh my God, I'm just being offered this much money for a job. Right? Cool. If you have the consciousness to go into it, hey, this is a wonderful opportunity, stepping stone. However long it lasts, I'm okay, but right now this is awesome. Versus, I'm going to make this last and a new job offer comes to you. That is really what you want. But you go, not really. Because I'm unconscious, I'm going to choose this thing again, which is only going to last six months making this kind of money and this kind of joy. But if you'd have chose that, it may have taken you two years. But in those two years, a greater bang and burst of light happens in your life. That is called becoming conscious or unconscious. Animal magnetism. What are you attracted to? Are you attracted to instinct, inspiration, that which is divine, your natural self? God is the nature of all things, all things, omnipresence. God is the nature of all things. So at the core of everything, the divine rest, or that thing you don't like so much, couldn't exist either. How easy is that? Take God out of the equation. The pleasure and the pain goes away. Add God to the situation. The pain is the only thing that goes away. Or the suffering, rather. Animal magnetism. What are you attracted to? What gets you? What pulls you into the experience? Are you conscious of it? Fantastic. Just being conscious of it, you know, it's a stepping stone. I'm just enjoying this thing. Perfect analogy. I am a football fan. I am not, but whoever you are, I am a football fan. And my team is playing the rival. And you lose. And they get so mad. Have you heard of parents in the bleachers at their children's baseball game? They get so mad by what they would call a bad call. Fighting mad. That's unconscious. Consciousness playing the game of baseball, playing the game of life, would look like my child just played a baseball game today and he did fantastic. It applies on every level of your life. What are you attracted to? Is it serving you? If you go into it consciously, knowing it's temporary, you win. If you go into it consciously and not choosing it at all, you win. You go into it unconsciously you have a very small percentage is going to work out the way you want. You might win. Mostly, you go into it unconsciously. You're going to end up, in hindsight, going, what is it I am not getting about this cosmic riddle that is relentlessly being played on me? Nothing is being played on you. You're playing with your life, almost like a gambling because of your ignorance, which is never bliss. Ignorance does not bring about bliss. It brings about car wrecks. I'm ignorant of the sign that said slow down and you pass through this intersection and 
Ignorance. You're unaware of a piece of furniture because the light is dark. You break your toe. Ignorance does not bring about bliss. Those red flags you're seeing in your life is a, a, a decision-making moment. Mark is saying, you know what this is. Choose it consciously. Have yourself a hell of a good time. Expect it to end. Or the red flag can mean so-and-so vibrates this way. Maybe your presence in their life can help them become a better human being. Not that they're broken and definitely not that you're trying to fix them. But that they are a potential mate or it could be a potential situation. But that is all determined by your choices and your behavior and how you spin the reality. When you grab on it, you become unconscious. When you let it go, it becomes an infinite possibility. Animal magnetism. What are you drawn to, dear one? Are you in a cycle? Hello, Jennifer Smith. Let's see. Uh, Kelly says, I have so much emotion inside and I'm not sure how to deal with it. I know the reasons, or at least I think I do. I love that you said that. Or at least I think I do. Kelly, here's the thing. You became... From unconscious to conscious, I have so much emotion inside that's conscious. I'm not sure how to deal with it. That's conscious. <laughs> Let me get rid of this thingy thingy. I know the reasons. That is conscious, but it, it can leave room for unconsciousness. This is what brings you back to consciousness. Or at least I think I do. Now you're open to possibilities that are not in your grasp. Because if they were in your grasp, you would not be in your conundrum. Fantastic, Kelly. Of what I am dealing with. You're dealing with infinite possibility. And your declaration of, I'm not sure what I'm dealing with. That is fantastic. You know I'm always here. You and I do have a phone date. Elaine says, hi, powerful, beautiful Keith. Love you, man. Love you, sis. Lincoln. So tonight's presentation is animal magnetism. Do you want relationship on the rebound? A friend of mine at Rock House Live has a song called, I found my greatest love on the rebound. Doesn't mean it's not possible. It's asking you to be aware of what you are doing. Are you in a karmic pattern that's going to spin you into, wow, what a hot looking chick, to, or a, wow, is that a hot looking guy or what, sweetheart, <laughs> to, this may be a hot looking person. Where do you see yourself? One year. One year down the road. A year would be a very defining moment. Without judgment. Knowing what you've observed with the person. Are you really wanting to not be alone? Or, or are you making a conscious decision? Taking on whatever baggage or non-baggage. Are you that person? Are you conscious? Simply relationship, family. You're done with your family, you're done with your family. doesn't mean they're not your family. There are people not of your biological blood that are your family more than your biological blood family. So in that understanding, sometimes you have to get out of the attraction the animal instinct, well, this is my biological blood. I am an animal. This is my freaking clan. They can still be your clan at a distance. Some people do leave the wolf pack and venture out on their own. Jonathan Livingston's ego was such a one. That's where your liberation is. 
that's where you can fly high and cuff your wings to get a little more altitude and a little more speed, just like that. You want speed? Become conscious of what you're choosing. Because attractions of all sorts will present themselves. God will throw you a fishing lure. Your ego, unconsciousness, will throw you a fishing lure. So how do you find those things that are going to take you only so far and halt? And that's okay if you're conscious, again. Or do you want something a little more everlasting? So how do you have the discernment to figure that out? It's called awareness. It's called consciousness. You want help? Contact me. I'll help you. Do you see the red flags? Or do you see spirit waving a right flag, a white flag saying, surrender, surrender, surrender? One more Lavender Soul. Small pause. Going to be right back to see if I'm going to go into vessel mode. Let's see who's here. Let's see. Let's do the update. The Sha Sha walking on the beach. Elwood, Rena Trudy, Robert Kelly, Mary Amalon. Short Lavender Soul song. Going to be right back. Looking for it. Looking for it.
Welcome back to Center of Light. Tonight we've been talking about animal magnetism. What's your attraction? Instinct connecting to inspiration, wisdom, God that lives in all of us. Or just that person, this thing, that job, that money. It's all cool. Are you conscious of it? Are you conscious of it? Is it fleeting? If you understand it's not going to last, you don't get hurt on the end. When you invest, when you vest in something so strongly, <laughs> little did I realize the last song I played by Lavender Souls, Until You Walk By, oh my God, Until You Walk By, I didn't know shit, now I'm so, ah. That fire is amazing. It can be a blessing or it can be a curse. Robert says, my dog is pretending she is a cat. Hello, Cheryl. Thank you, everyone, for joining tonight. Keith Anthony Blanchard here. I'm not sure if I'm going to do a presentation tomorrow. I have my son. I might do a presentation with my son. If not, we're going to hunker down and watch some movies and get groovies. Always good to see you. Remember, you are in control when you're not in control. Stop trying to control everything and be in control from a more subtle vantage point. I understand attraction and being mesmerized. It's part of the fun. There's a roller coaster, a two-story roller coaster that twists and turns and goes upside down and corkscrews. I can't wait to get on it. And when you're on it, you might wish you never got on it. I know. I went to Dollywood and I got on the Screaming Eagle. My God. Just be aware. Be conscious. Attract what you want deliberately. Stop being such an animal. You animal. <laughs> Stop being such an animal. You animal. Mies love you. Live in the light. Be good to yourself. Stop stressing. Stop stressing. Stop being an animal. Ah. Peace out of